Hi there, Mystery Baker here. Hope you're all doing well. I thought I'd do a bit of a cake crafting video. Haven't done one in a while. And this is basically for my beginners and novices who are just new to cake decorating. And I'm going to make some miniature bows. Miniature bows are ideal for decorating around a cake or um, decorating the tops of cupcakes. So it's quite versatile and it's a great thing to know because once you um, kind of get the grips of making a bow, you'll for, you'll always be making bows, I promise you. So for my novices, you can fast forward if you wish, but I'm just going to run through what I need to make them, okay? So I've got some white fondant here that I've coloured with pink, okay? Now I use sugar flare and it's a colour gel. Okay, and it's always best to colour your fondants with colour gel rather than liquid. Not Don't use the liquid food colouring because that changes the colour of a cake batter, a cake mixture. It it will ruin your fondant if you were to add it. So use the gel colours. That's, that's for a start. And because we're making bows, I could just leave this and make the bow um, out of the fondant. But I want to change that consistency. And I'm going to add this product here, which is... Um, CMC Tyros powder CMC and this changes the gooey soft consistency of your fondant to a more um, solid like modeling clay now it's very similar to gum paste or sugar paste or flour paste I should say um, but it's not exact it's a little bit more difficult to use than flour paste and um, gum paste and modeling clay but 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 and here's the big but it's cheaper <laughs> and um unless you're you know you're making lots and lots of money 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 um it's an expensive hobby if you do it that way i mean cake decorating is an expensive hobby i suppose but we're trying to be realistic here there's no point buying the best of the best um of everything uh, especially when you're just a beginner and ruining at least half of it when you first start off because you do you make mistakes and there's a lot of waste there's a lot of waste anyway I will promise you that cake decorators who say there isn't a lot of waste well we'll we'll, we'll beg to differ on that because I think there is so okay so you'll need some of that you'll need a little rolling rolling pin or, or any rolling pin you know but I use a little small one here because it's a small piece of fondant that I'm working with you can use some water or the brilliant the brilliance of this CMC powder is it's so versatile because it can actually make glue edible glue and it's fantastic mm -mm -mm. it's fantastic and I'll actually link in the description box below um my um video that I did on CMC and calculating how much CMC you need to add to your fondant which can be a bit tricky but uh there you go i've got my pizza cutter <laughs> i've got a little brush a little little brush for my water and glue i'll move that back there now so we're going to begin a pizza cutter a toothpick you know technology <laughs> i've got all the equipment you know all the equipment <laughs> um a ruler of any kind a ruler of any kind and I've just got a little palette knife and that's just to lift my bows up with when I've made them okay so on a scalpel or a sharp knife will do you know let's not uh, go over the top so are you ready if you are you can grab yourself a coffee and make some notes or you can craft along with me the choice is yours I'm going to put the kettle on and when we come back we'll begin okay have you got your coffee are you ready because I've got mine <laughs> so we're going to I'm going to show you how I apply my CMC Talos powder and basically change the consistency of the soft gooey fondant to a more malleable um, fondant and it will harden so I can make my bows in advance set them aside and then um, use them later which is great really so for a small amount of fondant um, apologies for the food colouring on my fingers. I have been making lots of different bows, <laughs> uh, hence the blue, and you'll see why later. But um, there's my fondant, and I'll bring my CMC in here. 
So basically, I don't add the CMC to a large amount of fondant. I just add it to what I'll be using at that time. So I do it in batches. The reason being is sometimes if I add a huge piece of fondant and add the CMC to it, eventually I'll get distracted or I won't do the project that I thought or um, I come back to it later and it hardens off and it's unusable. So I just use a small piece of fondant for the project and, and add it as I go rather than doing one big huge block of fondant, dipping it in CMC, I just use a little. Okay, hope that's making sense. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm just dipped that in. Can you see how much I've, I'm just dipping it in. Okay, like that. I'll just show you. Okay. There, I've coated the back of it. Okay, coated the back, I'm gonna bring it in. And then I fold it in on itself. Okay. And then I dip it one more time. Shake off any excess. And dip it in one more time. And that should do. A little goes a long way. Sorry, I'll show you how I... So I basically start with my fingers, pushing the fondant. And then I make... I'll move that CMC because I'm liable to. And then I roll it into a sausage. I obviously do it faster than this. And then roll it up. And then roll again. So basically I'm rolling in on itself because I'm wanting to incorporate all of that CMC throughout the fondant and by rolling it thin and then bringing it back again it does that a little bit of a workout <laughs> okay a little bit of a workout See? and you're ready okay you're ready it's still quite malleable you it's still quite soft but what I do now is because this is a step-by-step -step guide how I handle the fondant as well. I'm going to place it in some cling film, cling wrap. And I'm just going to leave it for five minutes. And we'll start in five minutes. Back in a bit. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. And when you do add CMC, just a little note. Sometimes the colour does fade a little. So it might go a little bit lighter than it started out. But not too much it doesn't lose too much of the color so i've had that sat there for a couple of minutes doesn't need much longer than that so you can get on with your projects basically you don't have to wait and wait some people do they wait overnight um i tend to work straight away with it so i'm putting a little bit of corn flour cornstarch or you can use icing sugar and we're going to begin rolling okay so where is my running pin now I'm going to have to stand up for this because the camera is in front of me. So I'm actually rolling behind myself. I can't see. <laughs> so <laughs> when you do it, you'll do it a lot better than me. So I'm rolling and turning. And I usually start and I roll from the centre. Because that's the thickest part. Usually it's the ends that go very, very thin and the centre is thick. So if you roll from the middle, that will not happen. So I've rolled it out, two millimetres, that's about it. And I'm just going to make an indentation, get a straight edge, and then using my trusty pizza cutter. Ah, trusty, I've just made a mistake, but hey, I'm going to show you. Life's little accidents. <laughs> so anyway, I've got a straight edge. And with the fondant, just wrap it in some cling film. You can use it later. And then with my eye, but you can measure it because if you want to take more time, I'm going to measure a centimetre thickness. I'm going to, again, make an indentation. Or you can cut all the way through. And then with a pizza cutter, just sharpen that off and cut that. Now you can keep going, making lots of different... I'll do another one. And make it more like a production line, okay? Again, like so, and then with that fondant, bring your cling film in and cover it to keep it protected, and it will last. It will last. So basically, I've got my two pieces of fondant. I won't be needing more because I'm only making one ball. But you can do a production line. I'll keep that out because I might need it. Who knows? So I've got a piece there. Okay. 
So to be technical, and I'm usually play by eye, but I'm going to be technical for you beginners and we're going to make the bow six centimeters. So I make a little mark at the, the zero and a little mark at the six and then halfway I just make a little dot in the middle. Okay, so each bow will be six centimeters with a dot at three centimeters. So I'm just going to cut where I've made my mark. Okay. Again, I'm not close up. And there's my little dot in the centre. All right. Let's see if it's movable. Yeah, it's movable. It's not stuck to the surface. And then with a little bit of glue or water, I'm just going to put a tiniest amount at that side and that side. And a little tiny touch in the middle. Less is more. Don't use a lot of glue. And I'm going to pick up that end. Uh, let's see. Yeah, pick up that end. Okay, you see. And I'm going to curve it over, bearing in mind I'm not looking at it, but you are. And then where the little dot is, that's my halfway point, and I just press down, like making it. And then I push in, with my, I give it a nip, just a light nip, and then push up at the back to keep that dome shape. Okay, and I twist it around, being as gentle as I can, lift that end, lift that end, and this time, because that's nipped at the bottom, I nip here. So I nip that and then I push down like so. Like that. And if you wanted to, you can make them holes bigger like that. And you just, that's it. And you just let that. It looks like from the side, if I tip it, see if I can tip it. It looks like a bee, all right? And you just let them dry. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. And when I come back, I'll do the little um, ribbon tails, okay? The bow tails, okay? So I'll just push that back where it came. I have to be gentle now because I've tipped it over. Ah! Come back to me. And then if it isn't sticking, because obviously you don't play around with it like I do, because I'm just showing you, just push, push down make sure it's all in place okay like that and they will dry and the glue will harden and when they have so you can basically do a production line of all these bees loads of bees <laughs> loads of bows and um set it aside or set all your bows aside actually while we're here i'm going to show you how to make the t the tails all right the tails so using this same fondant that we've used. I'm going to cut it half a centimetre. So just with my, I'm just using my judgment. As I say, you can do rows and rows of these. Rows and rows. Make a nice clean edge. And then I'll need two for this bowl. So I'll move them out of the way. So I've got two. Can you see? And then with a scalpel. Scalpel sounds very official, doesn't it? You're going to cut these ends off and make a triangle shape. So cut off and then cut down like so. Can you see the little tail come taking shape? And then again on the other one, do the same thing like that. Okay, can you, ooh, can you see? And what I then do is I kind of just, just cut a little bit off on an angle. So that side, and then that side, like that. So there they are. And we're not finished there. I mean, you can leave them like that, but what I use is this fantastic tool. <laughs> and toothpick. And I pick up the swag, or the tail. Be gentle, because it's still soft. And I rest it over the toothpick and then I pinch I pinch and it, it gives movement to the ball can you see how that's flat this one's flat like that and yet this one has some movement so I'll move that right the way up there goodbye see you later you can dry up there and I'll do the same thing with this one I get the toothpick like so 
push it over holding the toothpick push down and then I pinch just pinch can you see how me pinching now as you move away as you can see the bow has some movement it's not flat anymore and you will continue with that process and keep this fondant that you've had and um, keep it covered and allow all your your bows and all of your tails um, allow them all to dry and when you we come back we'll be doing the knot in the center and completing the bow I'll be back in a bit but I'll actually be in reality it'll be about half an hour so I'm gonna tidy up and get myself something to eat see you in a bit okay I've come back in it's been sat my, my bow has been sat there for about 10 minutes and I thought oh do you know what I'm just gonna get on with it <laughs> But in an ideal world, you wouldn't. You'd wait till all of your little ribbon bow tails are dry and wait till your all your bees or bows with the little ears are dry, okay? So please don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> so with the other piece, it's about half a centimetre thick. I'm just going to cut. But you could do these in batches. About two and a half centimetres long. And then with a scribing tool, or you can use a cocktail stick, I'm just going to make some indentations. Oh, I hope this is... I just go down. Can you see? And then maybe another one, like so. I'm just making some indentations. Can you see? To replicate the ties of a bow, the folds in a bow, can you see? Yeah. And I'll just nip that off there, like yeah. that. So there's your three parts to your bow. You've got your little tails, little ears for the bow, and the little knot for the bow, because that's going to be the knot. So I'm going to very gently with them, very gently. I'm just going to move them to the side. Bring this in. <laughs> Bring this in. Okay. And then I'm going to try and find my brush. It's gone walkies. Uh-oh. My brush has gone walkies. What a surprise. Um, not to worry, I do have more, so I'll use this little one here. It's okay. I'll... So I'm just going to get some edible glue. I'm just going to place that glue in the centre there. Okay, just for now. Very gently, because you don't want to damage it. Although you know me, I probably damage it. And then I'm going to turn the knot upside down, and I'm just going to, on the flat side, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the middle, just so it sticks. Okay. And bring it back round and then just going to very gently push that over. Can you see what I'm doing? And then I need to get pick it up and I press it down at the sides like so. Okay. And I'm going to nip whoop, from the back like that. Okay. Sorry. Can you see? How pretty, how pretty, how pretty. Now bear in mind, this is still soft. Yours wouldn't be soft. I promise you it wouldn't be soft. So I'm gonna very gently move that along. These are still soft, but the Tylos powder hasn't come into being yet. I'm just gonna push them together like that, you see? And then with a little bit of my water or glue, I'm just going to Put some on the edges like that just on the tip and bring them in bring them in like that can you see and then very gently <laughs> very gently she says i'm going to put some glue on the underside put some glue underneath and i'm going to stick those down she says like that. Can you see? No. You wouldn't be using wet fondant. You'd be using dry fondant, which is a lot easier to work with. And then move the bowl over there. So you see. There's my bowl. Can't really see. And if you wanted to, you don't have to. But you can add some luster. This is just some white rainbow dust. It's pearl white and I put a little bit on a brush and then I use the 
lid just to thinning that out and I just very gently very gently add a little bit of my luster bear in mind these are not dry <laughs> but it adds a little bit of va va boom to your bowl okay and brings out the folds and let that to dry properly I mean you know you get my drift and I want to show you some more that I've made hang on hang on because I made a few <clears throat> I made a few. Let me just lift this up. Live coming at you. <laughs> and there's the bones that I've made in advance. And if I wanted to, I could add some, as I say, luster dust. Add a little bit of sheen to them if I wanted to. Just adds a little bit of glitter, like so. As you can see, just gives it a bit of a bling we all like a little bit of bling but basically that's your bows made that one there is looking a bit dreary as you can see because i've just squashed him with my <laughs> with my polystyrene but you won't do that i know you won't you're all good you're all much better than me more organized than me i will learn to do close-up tutorials i promise i see i am learning every day and i'm learning don't do close-up tutorials like i have done i must change <laughs> Give me a like if you haven't already. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.